up keeping in line of choosing activists has nominated Nina Nayak, who is former chief of Karnataka Child Rights Commission from Bangalore South. Nina Nayak is fighting on the planks of fighting corruption in India, Swaraj for people, transparency in government and welfare of children and women. AAP is trying to emerge as the dark horse in the fight for Bengaluru. Nayak is trying to tap into the middle class frustration over illegal constructions, lack of water in the area and the desire of some voters to be in the wheels of change. Nina Nayak has been campaigning in areas where developmental works are slow and where civic amenities are a cause of big concern. These candidates are hoping that they will be able to create history from Bangalore South, a constituency which is diverse and dynamic. So that's what the candidates are promising, but people have various expectations from their neta. And experts believe this time round, it will be a tight contest in this constituency. The candidates look confident, but what do the experts who have been studying this constituency for years got to say? This is one of the most high-profile constituencies in whole of India. That is uh, because of Nandan Nilekani, that is, who is a, uh, it's, he's a very big personality in whole of India. So with his uh, first ever uh, uh, venture into the uh, electoral politics, it's one, it has caught the attention of uh, entire India. And secondly, one of the most powerful MPs in Karnataka, uh, Mr. Anand Kumar, and not, not just in Karnataka, he's also in uh, national politics, he's a big name. So due to this one, it, is, it has become a very important constant in the uh, whole of uh, uh, India. And uh, I see this, there is a little bit of twist and turns in this constituency in these elections. Though Anand Kumar has been a continuous winner in this uh, constituency since 1996, this year there is a twist and turn. Because initially uh, it was considered, even the BJP insiders used to say that it's tough for Anand Kumar this time. But as soon as Modi wave started, you know, Modi, Modi kind of uh, phenomena started, I think the chances for Anand Kumar started becoming brighter and brighter because that has always, that constituency has always supported a non-Congress candidate and Anand Kumar has been there. Added with uh, 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 this Modi factor, chances for Anand Kumar increased. Initially, after this turn, people thought, okay, it's easy when Nandan Nilekani contest. He's no political person. He doesn't have an experience in uh, uh, politics. So they thought it's easy. But again, uh, situation changed where when you consolidate the entire votes of Congress uh, in that constituency, that whole of uh, Lok Sabha constituency, you take the uh, uh, Vidhan Sabha elections, the last day Vidhan Sabha elections, they score about some 56,000 votes. The Congress has a majority of 56,000 votes. Now, Congress wants to consolidate and retain those uh, votes with uh, Congress. So if that happens, Nandan has a brighter chance. And Nandan has, uh, though he has not accepted as a political person, he has introduced two important uh, strategies there. One, to make the people who are not voting to vote. So that's the reason they are uh, reaching out to all those people, educated class of people who are not voting. He's reaching them and asking them to go and vote and elect him for a better Bangalore. He's not taking it as a national or anything else. If you want some better facilities in Bangalore, elect me and you have to go and vote. That is motivating a couple of, uh, or a large number of non-voters to vote. That is a game changer we, do, we have not experienced it so far. Bangalore South is a center of art and culture. Many celebrities are also quite opinionated when it comes to what their constituency deserves. Actually, if you look at Anant Kumar, uh, his score is well above the national average, you know, on, uh, on MP's performance. Uh, I mean, somebody needs to go through that criteria on how he has been evaluated as that. I think the question you should ask is, why should you elect somebody for a second term, third term, fourth term? You have to have a term limit. Maybe you should have been stopped at the second term. I think it should apply to everybody. So what I expect from an MP is that he's able to influence policy, nudge policy in such a direction that, you know, he can create a better society. And, you know, he can keep a focus on his constituency because uh, cons the constitution constituency has aspirations that, important, that are important probably for the nation. One of the things I would expect is that 
we have a clear timetable on what will happen with the metro phase two and phase three, which is totally 220 kilometers because phase three is supposed to be a circular rail. So I want to have a roadmap. I want to see what are the delivery dates and what is the process by which that delivery can be affected. Now, I know it is not in his control to do that, but he can ask or bring up these questions and he can actually nudge law, uh, shaping of the law in the direction that these things are enabled for us. That he'll fix the drains and uh, you know he'll come and visit us and all. It's very archaic, you know. Actually, the Indian uh, electoral uh, debate, no, needs to grow up. I think because uh, that is, it's not the duty of an MP to fix your drains uh, and all that, you know. I mean, you should ask that your corporator. You should have taken your municipal elections more seriously. The other thing I'm going to expect, you know, Nandan or Anand Kumar, to, uh, is is that they should be able to under the 74th Amendment, they should be able to bring more lo powers to the local governance. BBMP should be a real body with real powers of governance and release us from the clutches of these greedy, you know, uh, politicians who get, get elected from elsewhere in the state but who don't care about Bangalore, you know. I'm worried about that. I'm saying an MP should, should have responsibilities and duties at this level. Finally, I have another question on the Ahmad meeting. You know, I think the Aam Aadmi should be empowered. I completely agree with, uh, you know, Kejriwal and his uh, group when they say and the Aam Aadmi should be empowered. But I do not agree that the Aam Aadmi should rule because it's a very dangerous idea. It's a specialist idea. You need people who are capable of understanding the complexity and enormity of the problems and shape solutions, you know, that are suitable, custom made for, uh, you know, Indian conditions. I don't think Aam Aadmi uh, can resolve these problems. So I'm saying it's a welcome sign that Nandan Nilekani is there. And it's, um, while Anand, Anand Kumar has the drawback of being there for a long time and what is the new thing he can do for having been there for a long time, he has the advantage of experience and he has the biggest advantage that probably his party will form the government and he'll become you know, influential in government and he should be able to deliver some of these things. You know, That is what I hope for. Get the things done like uh, uh, basic facilities, then the infrastructure, good roads, good footpaths, clean, green, colorful, beautiful city, uh, making optimum use of the uh, natural resources from these things. Uh, being an artist, I want to, uh, uh, I want my MP to notice and support two things. As everybody is aware that since four years we are trying to get the memorial done of my father-in-law, Dr. Vishnu Vardhanji. Our idea of memorial is, yes, there, there will be a samadhi, uh, but not just that. Uh, we would like to uh, build an uh, institute, educational institute, uh, uh, which will be a films and television institute of India's branch here. Uh, they have the institute in Pune but they don't have a branch anywhere else in, in, in India. So we would like to have a branch here, which will be um, uh, you know, uh, a great help for the future generations. Um, and as well as we will be, as Kannada guards, we will be very uh, proud to have. So we would like to, and it will be a joint venture of Karnataka government and the uh, central government. So MP is who is uh, a connection between these two. So he will have to support us, encourage us, and be helpful uh, in getting this uh, thing done here. When the armed army on the streets of Bangalore South were asked what they would want from their leaders, whom they will be electing for these elections, they had three things on their agenda. Water, development, and most important of all, security for women. Uh, women should be given a lot of uh, protection and all that. And... Uh, the budget, everything they have to take it into consideration. It should be helpful for the common man. Okay, one thing is uh, the areas should be neat, neat and clean. BBMP should re <coughs> really look into saying that uh, the road should be clean, road should be wide, and more parking space. And as what uh, the other people also say, the woman, woman empowerment, and there should be a lot of security for the woman. That's what I would say at this point in time. Uh, the elected members should. Uh, 
uh, assure us that the life of common man is uh, definitely safe in uh, Bangalore. I think I agree. The only thing we would expect from the government is that the women have safety right now. And uh, from, the, from our elected leaders that come by, the only thing that each and every person is that you're safe on the road when you leave your house, that you're not scared of someone else coming, attacking you, or not being uh, scared that you get into a bus and you're not sure where you go or where you land up. So I think the priority should be like safety of women especially. All other uh, burning issues like water, roads, all other issues, he should take care and he should, uh, he should be willing to do something different from the previous MPs. Yeah, there has been a lot of you know, water issues in and around Jainagar third block, uh, maybe because of uh, you know, ma many apartments creeping up here. So the MPs need to look at it and uh, the public transport uh, needs to be you know, enhanced to you know, different areas like uh, electronic city or whitefield yeah the politics should be cleanly maintained in bangalore they need to keep the roads clean the public should be satisfied and we want a clean politics in bangalore like it requires a good mps and uh, mlas you should also participate in the elections campus we want a green city better infrastructure a corrupt free society so that's pretty much what we would like from the mps of south bangalore a clean administration I mean, the infrastructure, I have been in Jainagar for the last 11 years, and I have seen the infrastructure, the roads, and the facilities deteriorate. There is absolutely no parking. I mean, they dig up the roads and nothing is filled up. Overall, I think uh, a parliament election is around erecting a clean government. So we want people to work both locally as well as at a national level. The battlefield is ready. The warriors are armed and April 17th, their fates will be sealed when thousands will exercise their adult franchise. Will London break into BJP bastion or will Modi wave sweep the constituency? Well, we'll have to wait till the 16th of May to find out who wins this battle for Bangalore South. With camera person Devaya and Naveen and Vergis, Harish Upadhyay, News 9.